Hello, peeps. Right, we are. What are we doing? We're just mucking about at the moment. We're going to do an experiment with a couple of things. A couple of people have asked me to try a couple of things, and also I want to try something myself. So, what we are going to do, I am making three different front axles. As you can see, I've done two. I'm in the middle of the third. Uh, I'm going to make up this 4x2 chassis as basically just a test bed. There won't be no cab or nothing on it. Just to test a few different things. So, I saw something on YouTube a couple of weeks ago about a the plate that goes in the end of the motor has got a bigger slot and a different pinion gear. Gives it less speed, more torque. So it's claimed. So I'm going to build two gearboxes, one bulk standard with an 80 turn motor and one with this new bit when it arrives with the same motor. So there'd be no the only difference is this plate at the end and the pinion gear apparently. I bought two motors exactly the same. Well, funny enough, actually, I bought four because it was cheaper to buy four than it was to buy two, if that makes sense. So I bought exactly the same motors to try that, just to see what the difference is, how it performs, how it goes, if there is a difference in speed and torque, and blah 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 blah. Second one is some about three people have asked me this. And I've been curious myself for a little while, so I'm going to try it. So I have done a bulk standard according to the Tamiya manual front axle. Goes on like that, bar at the front, steering at the back. And we all know, not the best lock. Some like it, most don't. Most do something to change it. It does foul on the ends, it's not very brilliant, let's say. So, we've done a bulk standard one. I've got to wait for some more pots, so this is just the beginning. This is just a taster, if you like. I've done, or I'm in the middle of doing, a you call it a standard with a Carson bar. So the bar will be at the back under the gearbox, so to speak, which I've heard claimed you don't get any benefit of. I beg to differ myself, but we will see. And then I'm doing one I saw Terry Wilde do. Well, she's done a few, but I was watching her video last week where she's fold out the ends to give you more of a lock. Um, the only difference between mine and hers, which shouldn't make a slightest bit of difference, is on the shock hangers, she also cut one side off. I ain't putting any on, so it shouldn't fail. There is no reason to blame that for failing at all because there won't be any there. And we will and I've done the front and the back obviously. And I'm waiting for some cranked or offset ends for the bar to go on like she's got. So there's best as a comparison as I could possibly get it to what she done on her video. Like I say, I'm interested to see what the outcome will be myself. So, one at a time, I will fit one of them on this. I will mark its starting point. I will do 180 on full lock and I will mark its finishing point. 
in forward and reverse. And then I will change to the next one, do the same, next one do the same. So we will get a definitive answer. What gives you a good lock, what gives you the best lock, which gives you the best steering, which whatever. Whatever way you want to look at it, just to make it easier for people to decide what one they want to use. I've not seen a comparison one done before, so I thought I'm interested to see what the difference it will be. We all know the standard one is going to come out worst. I want to see if it's worth all the extra effort filing all this out or just by changing this bar and moving it to the back how much difference there is and if it's beneficial of doing it. Uh, she actually said this is a cheap mod. Technically it is, but you've got to buy the ends. I think falsely claim was made that these bars are 30 quid. I've never seen them over, well I've never paid more than a tenner for one. Actually I used to only pay about 750 or 8 quid for them. There's a couple on eBay as we speak, or as I speak at this second, for about £11.50. So I've never seen them for 30 quid. So even if it's you have to pay £11.50 you have to pay to do this mod with the cutouts and the, the bent ends. Pack of 20 ends is 12 quid, so there ain't much difference. I know you get 20 ends, but you're only doing one. If you're building a lot of axles, different matter. But if you're only building one, you've still got to look at the same layout basically, and we see what the results are. And then I will change the gearbox from a standard one to the one with this new bit in the end and see what the difference of that is. And then I can keep this chassis as, like I said, just a test bed. Anything I need to try I can just throw on it. I might just put a flat bed on the back so I can plonk things on to test. Uh, I might even just stick the battery on there rather than farting around with it underneath. Like I say, there ain't going to be a, a, a body or nothing on it. But that's as far as it goes at the minute. I'm going to put the two gearboxes together as standard and then when the other plate turns up I've just got to swap the end plate. Uh, I need to find, I looked on eBay, can't find any, so I have to keep looking, these plates and the U-bolts. I know I could just undo them and swap the axles out but it's a lot easier to just undo the four screws on the corner take the whole thing off put the next one back on it's just easier to do while it's on the chassis so if I can get them I'd rather do it that way there's no rush because like I said I'm waiting for a few other bits I've got to wait for the bent ends to come anyway so I can't finish the builds and do the experiment yet it might come to that, but I'll just leave the springs on and change the axles out. But we will see. So that's where I'm at the moment. I guess the next video you'll see then. Uh, I could leave it running and do the motors, but who wants to see motors being, uh, gearboxes being put together? Once you've seen one, you've seen it. They all go together exactly the same way, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, yeah, so I guess the next video you'll see will probably be me doing the, the actual test and see what the outcome is. If you're interested. If you're not, don't watch it. I'm interested so I'm doing it for myself really but like I said I've been asked by a couple of people a few people if it's if it's worth doing this or if it's worth doing this I personally do this I think near enough every one of my trucks that has 
a Euro cab on it has a bent bar on it. I just think it's an easy option, it's very simple to do and I personally think it does make a difference. So this test will prove either way, won't it? Um, also got some Lego to do, which I'll probably be doing another couple of time-lapse videos doing that. Because some people seem to like that. And also... Where's it gone? I was given one of these lighted number plates for Christmas. So I want to do a test on this. Because it says... Uh, I'm doing this for memory so I could be slightly out but I'm pretty sure it said up to 3 mil without resistor or 6 to 12 mil with resistor but I don't know if any of you remember when I used one of these if you can see it it's just basically it takes one slot in this case it's taking it from the receiver but you can get them with the MFC plug on it and it gives you 10, 10 slots and two powered outputs for lights or whatever. So on my Mercedes Rigid, the black one, is one of these underneath with all the running lights on. So I want to see, first of all I want to test what the output is on these, the power. So I'm going to get... Um, Get my multimeter out, switch it all on and see what if I can work out what the output is per plug. So can I just wire that straight onto that or do I need to use a resistor? And then I've got to try and fit it to the lorry somehow. So that'll be fun. But that's a project that we need to look at. Um, yeah, so... I might, um, if I get round to that today, I might put the thing back on and so there might be another video or it might be on the end of this. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. If I want to do it, I'll do it. If I don't, I don't. <laughs> uh, at the moment, I'm trying to get a bit warm in here because I've not long come in. So I'm warming it up. I'm going to have a nice cup of coffee and then I shall start making two gearboxes if I can find all the parts. So, I will see you on the next one, I guess. Right, as you can see, I hope you can see. Yes, I know it's crude, but it's mine. And I've been using it for years. And many a people have copied it, so it works. So, right, I have put one of these onto this as I said. Brilliant little gizmo for how much they cost. They're very cheap. It comes with one spare plug and wire and you can, can buy it. Um, that ain't on. But you can buy a pack of ten. The downside is, as soon as you switch the power on, they're live. Shut up. These two um, servo plugs, for want of a better name, are switched. These are permanently live. So, depending on how you wire it up, because you could put a, I guess you could put a servo switch thing in here and then plug that into that so when you flick the switch that turns the power onto it and then all your lights would come on. How I've used it in the past like on the big black Mercedes with the flatbed is I've just wired this in so when I switch the power on all the running lights come on because it doesn't bother me having all the running lights on all the time and the 
S Scania is the same. When you switch the power on, certain lights come on because they're through this. Um, I'll show you what I mean. I don't know if these are going it. Let's try. Let's have a quick experimento. I think they will. But let's try anyway. Doesn't matter where you plug them in. Right, so as soon as you put power on, they should come on, as they have done, instantly. They're on permanently until you switch the power off. The difference being, if you, let's unplug that, and we put that onto here, uh, I'm guessing it would be the same way round as that, so that would go ground on the outside, switch on the inside. Let's try. So if I turn it on now, they're on. They're off. So these come on permanently, but they, them two, so you can have two off the servo plugs, are switched. Like I say, for how much they are, I think they're brilliant. About seven pounds, seven, eight quid, something like that. You can run, if you've got all these, that's an extra 20 LEDs. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, and then they are MFC plugs. So MFC plugs go straight into them. So you can either buy aftermarket ones like these wired up by someone else or use the LEDs from a MFC which just to show you just to prove the point for all the doubters out there so I think we can all agree that is definitely a MFC lead. And I'll do it while it's plugged in, so no trickery of trickery. Not that I'm a magician or pretend to be. And there you go. But what you've got to remember is they're permanently on. These ones are switched. Unless, like I said, if you put a I've got one somewhere, I might try it in a minute. If you put a, I don't know what you call them, servo switch, you know the ones you can just wire up so when you flick it your lights come on and off. If you put it through that, I'm guessing, then you could basically power the lock. Because if you turn it off, then there'd be no power coming to this, so they would all be off. But what I want to find out, and I think it's pretty much answered the question because it does say on it 5 volt but I need to test it anyway so let's um, see what voltage is given me so I know what to do with me number plate light Right, that's 5.3 volts. So I'm going to have to use a resistor if I come off of that. I'm going to have to use a resistor if I come off of anything really. You know. At least that answers the question. Um, I'm guessing they would be the same. They must be the same, wouldn't they? I'll give you a different voltage. Yeah, exactly the same. So 5.3 volts this gives off. Uh, well, I hope that helps someone, because I've used loads of these now. Well, I say loads. I've used uh, one, two, three, 
four, and I've got another four sitting on there. I like the ones that come straight out the receiver. Although I have used one on the S Scania that come straight out the MFC. So you, you lose one plug on your MFC, but you gain ten on here. The difference if you use it from the MFC, whatever function you would usually do on your, your controller, say your um, say your lights, so you'd flick it down for your lights to come on. On the first one, you could have it to turn these two on on the end. These would still be permanent, even from the MFC. That's all you have to keep in mind. Whatever you use come off of these 10 plugs is permanently on. The other two are switched. But like I say, where you're going to get something that will give you all them Latin lights for under a tenner. And if you buy all the pre-plugged leads, they're blanked wires on the end, so you can put whatever you like on them, whatever LEDs you like. But they've got the plugs on the end and they're probably they are probably about the equivalent of a MFC lead. I did have some here somewhere. Bear with me, caller, and I shall endeavour to find them to show you. Because that's what sort of person I am. Just go through the 650 part boxes I've got, and Anyone that watches me regular will know it's usually the bloody last one I come to. Unfortunately. And it looks like today ain't going to be any different. If they're even in these boxes, they could be in one of the other boxes. I don't know. My brain is like a sieve at times. Yep, not even in them. <laughs> not even in one of them. Definitely got some, I just don't know where I've gone. Change my glasses for a start. Found them, but I found one of these. So let's, let's try my. If I'm right in saying that, if I put that in there, if it bloody works, that is. All right. And then I'll put that in there. The only trouble with this is, I don't think it'll work this now. Because there's no switch one. 
So they're all off. They're all on. They're all off. They're all on. So it does work, but you have no control over that one. Which, thinking about it, would be quite obvious. So that's another way you can do it. Uh, pixies have been in here again. Bloody pixies bit again. Uh, I don't know where they are, but if you look them up, they're easy to find on eBay. There's enough people bloody selling them. So for what? Under 20 quid, about 18 quid. You can get the board and 10 pre-wired with the plugs on, not the other end. The other end are bare. So you put whatever you like on them, LEDs, what LEDs you want. Mm. I did buy a couple of sets, but as per usual, I put things down and I can't remember where I've bloody put them. That's why I bought all these boxes to put things in and then I forget what I've put in and where I've put them and in case you hadn't noticed I'm a bit of a plonker and I'm not what you would call very organised at times which is not a good advertisement for my job But don't tell my boss. Yeah, I don't know where they are. I don't know where they are. Um, I'm not going to waste any more time looking for them either. <laughs> I don't need them at the moment. I do have to have a good tidy up in here and another sort out and put things away where they should go instead of just bunging on a bloody table or somewhere. Anyway, I'm just waffling on now. You get the idea anyway. And I know what I need to do now, so if I want to use this through that, I will need to find one of them, one of them leads. Or I've got a, an old MFC lead with no LEDs on it for some reason, somewhere. Somewhere. Clearly, Ooh, that would work. That would work, wouldn't it? I'll be back shortly. Right, I'm back. So I've cut the plug off the end of the fifth wheel switch because I never use them, and I've used the wire. Just very crude, twisted together at the moment. But I've put the resistor on, and there's the number plate holder, which I'm hoping you can see on the camera. So, if I now switch the power on, hopefully the light comes on. Aha, there you go. So, yep. So that's going to have to be the way to go, I think. So I need to solder that in, solder that together, put some heat shrink on it, and then somehow get it on that truck. I was going to do some gearboxes, but I got distracted, as you can see. Um, yeah, right, so I'll get the soldering iron out, I'll solder it all together and then I'll be back. 
Right, I believe I've done it, so let's check it, shall we? Yep. Just need to get a number plate now. I've put it in the middle because of the way this is, it wouldn't go in. You need the ones that light up on the sides on the ends, not the one in the middle. So because that lights up in the middle, I've had to put it in the middle. But I'll get a oh, get a number plate from somewhere, put it on there and then see what it looks like. Now that beacon was working when I tested all this and wired it all up. And then Sod's Law, as soon as it all together and running, the bloody one of the beacons stopped. But hey ho, there's two on the front. So. It'll do. Now you see what I mean by running lights. I, I don't usually do running lights because to me they're too bright. If you run them at night or at dusk, say, you can't see Soddle. All you can see is just bright lights. It don't show the track. As you can see the light that's giving out. It's quite bright. This is why I don't do a lot of running lights. But Mr. Bundy made me the um, 3D printed the holders, so I thought it'd be rude not to use them. The only thing that gets me with this truck, though, well, I've built this truck, and that size of that fuel tank for the size of the truck. <laughs> it's a bit, a bit on the small side. But there you go, what can you do? setting is it what does all the lights but like I say they're on as soon as you switch the power on the running lights the number plate lights are on all the rest come on that's good there's only one of them working as well now Something else I'm going to have to look at. Might have taken off. Seeing as they're all bloody linked. Oh, it's always one thing, isn't it? Right, I've managed to fix this problem anyway. Don't know if you're going to be able to see, but basically the solder come off the back, so I've had to try and solder it in situ which I have now done, hopefully. Yep, here you go, they're all on now. So, at least that's one job done. Two jobs done. <laughs> Didn't get to do my bloody gearbox builds. Might do them tomorrow. So this will be, see you on the next one, because I am finished for today.